Hello everyone, today we'll show you how to create this interactive scene using the cloner and mouse events in Spline. This scene was made by Vlad, check out the Spline community to find this and more 3D content free to remix. Let's jump in and see how it's done. Let's start by creating a sphere, size 22 in all axis with 12 sides. The number of sides can impact performance so we can choose a value that balances visual effect and performance. Right click and select Reset Transform to set all values to zero. First, add a green Fresnel layer to give it that glowing green edge. And then add a depth layer to create a smooth gradient effect with four colors ramp. Transitioning from black to green, bright green, and white. Set the gradient's position mode to world so the gradient changes based on world coordinates. For the near and far, here is a reference. Add an icosahedron, size 300 in all axis, and set detail to 4, corner side to 1 for a smooth-like shape. Reset transform and place it at the center of the scene. Go back to depth layer and you can see the origin is lines up with the outer edge of the reference sphere. So the idea is lay out the small sphere on the edge of this reference sphere, and when the small sphere moves it shows different gradient colors depending on where it is. Now, let's clone more spheres and arrange them evenly into a larger sphere. First, select the icosahedron we created before, rename it Cloner Object. Quick tip, we use an icosahedron instead of a sphere because its vertices are evenly spaced, ensuring clones distribute uniformly. Next, select the sphere, go to the right panel, enable Cloner, Set the cloner type to object and choose cloner object. Set spread to vertex and increase the count to 100. Nice, we've got a perfectly even sphere made of clones. Click convert to instance and we got the clone groups. This allows each instance to respond to events individually. Next, let's add a follow event. Create a new sphere, size 300 in all axis. We only need it follow on X, Y axis, so make sure you set the Z position to zero, then rename it cursor. Click plus icon and select follow. We only need it to move on the X and Y axis, so go ahead and deselect the Z axis. For now, I'll keep its material visible so it's easier to see and we'll hide it later in the final scene. And there it is already following the mouse around. Next, we'll configure an interaction animation for this sphere that responds to mouse movement. Select the sphere and create a new state. In the base state, scale it to 1.4, so the spheres resemble each other more closely. In the second state, move the sphere slightly to shift it to a different position on the depth ramp. Set x to 40, y to minus 40, and scale it down to 0.1. Then, adjust the depth layer origin to this position, making sure the depth ramp sits at the edge of the cloned sphere. This way, when the sphere moves to the second state, its color will fully update the depth ramp along the edge of the larger sphere. Next, add an event and choose distance. When the distance between this sphere and the cursor is more than 200, it will trigger a transition. For the transition, keep the default settings and set the duration to 0.5 seconds. Add another event and choose state change. When the sphere is in this state, trigger a transition from the state back to the base state. Then select spring to create a bouncing effect. Let's unhide the cursor object so we can see it more clearly. Nice, it's working. Now, let's hide the cursor's material and check again. Looks great. Next, we want the sphere to have a smooth, gentle movement. First, press Command and G and group it. But make sure you select the sphere's base state before grouping, so the new group's position based on its position. Next, add a new state to the group. In this second state, move it slightly, Set X to minus 10, Y to 5, and Z to 10. 
Then add an interaction with a transition action. Keeping all the default settings, set the loop to infinite and the cycle type to ping pong reverse. Now go to play mode. The sphere has that nice slow drifting motion. Looks good. Next, we will add an animation to the clone group. Select the group and set scale to a 1.05 to align with the deep green part of the gradient. You can adjust the value as necessary based on your depth layer's configuration. Create a new state and rotate Y and Z axes 360 degrees. Add an interaction transitioning from the current state to the new state. Change to linear with a duration of 20 seconds and enable infinite looping. Wow, looking great. When the mouse is far, spheres animate gently, moving, resizing, and shifting from black to deep green. As the mouse nears, nearby spheres change color and size dramatically, then return to base. Moving the mouse across the sphere triggers all clones to animate, creating a striking effect. Finally, you can export your work to embed it in your website, or you can also prototype in Spline how the website will look like. We hope this tutorial inspires you to bring your brand's website to life with real-time interactive 3D. We're excited to see what you create. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.